Um, afternoon, so I'm Nikki, this is Elena. Hi. Uh, we're really pleased to be with you this afternoon to talk to you uh, a little bit more about the connected home and what we see as a new ambient area of advertising and essentially what that means to you guys and your brands. Just to backtrack a little bit, does anyone here know Unruly? Have we worked with you before? Okay, so I'll be telling you stuff that you haven't already heard, so that's good. Uh, so we're actually a video company. Uh, we're a global video company, and our job is to get branded video uh, seen in premium publishing environments, brand-safe environments across all different markets that would be important to you guys. So the business is really simple. It's two different parts. So really X is our distribu distribution arm. I can't even say the word. Uh, managed service or programmatic, whichever way our clients prefer. And then the second part is what we refer to as Unruly EQ. So it's our secret source as a company. Essentially, it's the emotional intelligence, the emotional data that we overlay on your campaign targeting to make sure that that performance really, really flies. And why do emotions matter? It will probably not come as a surprise to most of you in the room as marketers that emotions drive sales. So we know that brands that have a close emotional connection with their audience are far more likely to see profitability as a result of that relationship and that close brand storytelling. So how we manage to capitalise on that as a business and extrapolate the data to overlay on those campaigns is through our own methodology, our EQ methodology. So what we do is take a brand's video <coughs> and show it in front of a panel of 500 people. We actually show that brand's video in a stream of four in total so that the audience doesn't know which one is of special significance to us. It doesn't skew the results. Post watching the, the branded content, what we'll ask that audience member to do is to look at a list of emotions that we know are the most important to driving fantastic uh, campaign results. We'll say, which of these emotions have you felt on viewing this video? And how acutely between one and 10? Alongside this viewing experience, we also ask them to opt into um, facial coding software. So we've got a combination then at the end of the test of the claimed responses and the involuntary responses as well. And from there, what we're able to do is see from that target audience of 500 people who the most emotionally invested people actually are for that brand's campaign. And we just overlay those people onto the regular targeting. Because essentially, if we're finding the people that really connected best with that brand storytelling, they're far more likely to go on and do ultimately what you need them to do. So that's our business today, and we're delivering it through desktops, laptops, mobile phones. However, as we move into this new landscape, so the connected home of the future, what we see is a new opportunity um, or disruption, essentially. And that's why we often get asked, why would a video company build a connected home and installation in their London HQ? And it's three things really, it's data, voice, and internet things. So when it comes to data before the era of the connected home, we're using 4.4 zettabytes of data. But as we move on into 2020, we'll see that increase tenfold, it doubles up every year. Then looking at voice, the shopping that's generated today through that is 2 billion, but as we move forward to 2022, it's predicted to be 40 billion, huge, huge increase. And Internet of Things, all those tiny connected devices around us, pre the connected home, it was 10 billion, and now as we move to 2020, it's 50 billion as the prediction. Or if you ask Google, 200 billion because of smart cities, smart farms, etc. So data, voice, and the Internet of Things is essentially disrupting our business but probably also yours as well. And that's why we've built this connected home experience so we can really kind of explore what the opportunity can look like there for our business and how we are able to work with our brand partners <coughs> to deliver effective storytelling in this new ambient era of advertising. <coughs> so here it is, the connected home. So it's 2,000 square foot, uh, a connected apartment in the London HQ. Uh, it has all of the major rooms, so we've got the living room there, the kitchen, it goes on to the bedroom and so on and so forth. It's got all of the latest connected tech that you would expect to find and also some really interesting new players as well that are coming into the market. 
what it allows us to do, and it allows, allows our brand partners to do, is to kind of walk through this, uh, viewing it through the eyes of the consumer, because often when you're looking at planning, it's easy to think of these things in silos. But when you see them all interplaying together in an experience like this, which is essentially, you know, a depiction of not my home, I don't have a house that big, but a, that kind of apartment setting, you can almost see where the opportunities are in a way that you can't just from looking at videos online or just thinking about it. And we're bringing the experience to life in a number of different ways as well for the partners that we work with. Just go back. Ah. Not playing, video. but I think uh, so it's I not can just come here. doing the home tours, which we do really successfully, where we'll walk through yeah. some research that we've done on how consumers feel about being contacted by uh, brands within their, their home, essentially their sanctuary. But we also do uh, product launches. So here's Elena uh, mm -hmm. launching the new uh, Nokia sleep device and uh, the connected watch as well. We do a lot of thought leadership sessions, so we've got a number of celebrity sponsors, as Will I Am, who come in and talk about their businesses, um, where they see the future going, uh, future storytelling for brands. He's actually on the board of Atom Bank, who are uh, one of our partners. And it's a great opportunity for brands to showcase some of their new innovations in situ in the home as well. And we've had a lot of coverage on TV in the UK and in the States as well where we've been relied on for uh, Elena's expertise. I'm not going to take credit for that, but Elena's expertise in this area and what we see as being the, the next big things. So that's kind of today. The partners that we're working with are kind of wide and varied. So tech partners, as you might expect, but brands, retailers, because it's becoming increasingly important for them to think about how they're going to be delivering their experiences through this connected tech in the home. And also premium publishers, so we're actually owned by News Corp, so it's a, a cause dear to our heart, but we see a huge role for publishers in this new connected world, uh, where they're going to be called upon more than ever to be the, the expert voice for certain experiences. We've been running for a, over a year and a half now. Uh, we have had over 3,800 visitors. You can imagine that each tour, it's about 10 people. Um, mm -hmm. So that is like 380 tours uh, with our clients, publishers, partners, and so on. Um, and this is one of the key messages. So um, in terms of consumer behavior, it doesn't really change so much. People want to know about a product or a brand, then they want to experience it or explore it, and then they want to buy the products, right? That doesn't change, it's just the technologies or the way you do this. So this is what's changing, and it's that right now in the comfort of your home, when you want to know about a brand or a product, what do you do? Hands up. Anybody? If you're at home, Google. you Google it, right? That's a search engine. Google is a search engine. Well, we have to start getting used for people using these other two types of search engines, but it's the, kind, the same approach, and that is using voice as a search or lenses. That's image recognition, because right now, your phone is extremely powerful, the camera in your phone, the AI behind the camera, and it knows what you're looking at. It can detect what you're looking at, and that it becomes a search engine. So that is definitely changing, not only in the home. I mean, this happens in the streets. This happens in the retail space itself where people take a picture and so on. But it's just a new behavior that has different repercussions that we're going to show you. Um, then when you want to explore, you watch videos. If you're not at the retail space, you might watch a video. Well, what we see growing now is augmented reality. More and more companies are developing apps where you can launch the products or you can launch an experience and immerse yourself into the brand values or the product. And all of that happens before you decide to take a decision to purchase. Now, what this changes, and that's what we are very happy about, because at Unruly, really, we always try to think about what, uh, what is polite advertisement? How can we develop formats uh, to deliver polite advertisement? And um, this is the opportunity, the Internet of Things is the opportunity for us to show that advertising is no longer interactive and impersonal. If you look at this, what this means for advertising is that brands have to be accessible on demand. All of this happens when the consumer wants. Voice, image recognition, or AR, these are things that the consumer decides they want to do now, and they decide who they're going to speak to uh, to get that experience. Um, it happens all on demand. Otherwise, um, you need a strong AI for exactly that, to make sure that your messaging is personalized and that is non-intrusive. And this is especially key in the home environment, 
because everyone's, we did lots of questionnaires, and the key word that stands out most is, my home is my sanctuary. And that's why we took the challenge to explore the home environment, because once we learn more about how to write those rules, and uh, we do different experiments with the brands and so on, um, if you get it right in the home environment, you should be able to translate that to any other environment, retail, spaces, events, and so on. The home environment is the most challenging, is people's sanctuary. That's the kind of the keyword you have to keep in mind. So being available on demand and using machine learning and AI to be personal and non-intrusive is kind of key. And we say normally here, if you wanted to take a picture of any slide, this is the one, because that's, <laughs> that's kind of what the whole, um, the whole presentation is about. And now uh, we're just going to give you examples. One of them is how that, um, how that uh, we transfer that. So I have a background in product development. So I came in the team, and my role is kind of we listen to the, uh, the client, but then I can infuse all those learnings into product development. So we have this prototype on, uh, on iOS 12 for Apple right now. And what it does is the explore part. Imagine that you like Jimi Hendrix and you are reading an article. This is not in app. This is actually on a web browser. You're reading an article, and the video is not playing, but just go here, <laughs> hopefully. Hmm, OK. It's not playing automatically. Why is that? Typically, it was earlier. It was earlier. Ta -da. Yes. <laughs> so it's an article. You watch the video. If your phone has AR capability, guess what? You can, from the video, launch that product or experience in an immersive way. Um, and the technology right now on your phones right now, both Android and iOS, allows you to have a product in front of you real size. What you see is actually proportionate to your space. So you could see the guitar. You could explore it and then say, oh, yes, I'm adding that for my Christmas basket. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that's kind of how this experience is directly helping our agile system of uh, improving our formats. Um, and what this kind of behavior means is not necessarily that retail is going to die. When we say retail has, has to die, is we mean the way that as we know it today. But obviously, what we mean is that it just needs to transform. And we have many, many examples. And you will hear a lot of us talking today about Amazon. But, uh, but we do have a lot of examples that are led by them. I was in New York, and, um, and I visited the Forest Star store. We're going to release very soon a video about that. But I was also in London recently, where we had, and the videos are not playing, where, we ha where Amazon did a pop-up, a fashion pop-up. Um, and there is three things that we are realizing that retail needs to, three boxes that needs to tick today. Um, so one is the community feeling. So a lot of these things are starting to pop up in terms of retail are uh, based on research of what people like in that specific area. So it's not necessarily the same as stores showing the same everywhere, but they customize the spaces and what they show to what's trending in that area. So we see community building as an important part. Experience, um, as in being highly engaging um, and fun, but, and, and having activities. So here in the, uh, in the fashion pop-up of Amazon, there was even yoga classes. <coughs> it was crazy. This was done in partnership. This was last weekend, done in partnership with Vogue. Uh, you could have your own photo shoot <laughs> there in the window. Uh, and then educational. In the Amazon store in, um, in New York, for example, they have a section for the smart home because they want to push Alexa, but nobody really knows how to use Alexa with the lights and so on. So they have someone there per permanently in New York that can show you and educate you how to use these things. Basically, all the things that you cannot experience online or through, through any other way. So that is very important. So retail needs to change. And then also something very interesting that you saw before is that once you have the experience, they create brand awareness. Uh, we were not, well, before I went there, I was not very sure of like Amazon fashion quality. I never bought Amazon fashion. Um, but you got, you, you went there, you felt the fabric, you tried it on and so on. But then you could just add it to basket and get it shipped to your house. You didn't have to carry it with you. That's something that we're going to see more and more. 
other interesting things that Amazon is doing is really understanding that smart cities and all of these technologies give you incredible value for synchronization, to instantly know what's happening where and how. Now they're using these to build trust because they want eventually to enter your homes. So they have bought Ring, which means it's a company for smart locks, which means already in the States, you can allow Amazon to enter your house, deli do deliveries or services like cleaning and so on. Now there's a huge trust barrier there and not everybody will allow a brand to just come in your home. So what are they doing in the meanwhile? They can't deliver in your car. They find your car and that is happening with Volvo and other General Motor cars, only in the States at the moment. Um, and if you want, they find your car, they open the boot, they deliver the product, whatever your car is, it's quite handy. <laughs> um, so it's this kind of um, initiatives and understanding smart cities and synchronization and trust, what's making uh, these companies um, leapfrogging to control e-commerce. Uh, so that is Amazon, Alibaba actually not to underestimate, in not only in China, but how it's expanding everywhere else, and eBay as well. Now I'm going to dive into examples of, uh, you know, what's happening with voice, what's happening with image recognition, and what's happening with lenses. So with voice, first again, the car. I'm going to mention the car. We say the car is the driver of voice adoption. And that is because right now, I don't know, hands up, who are using uh, voice assistants? often okay okay very little is that on the phone yes yeah. what about having a smart speaker who has a smart speaker at home yeah. one two three oh, okay so a few more okay so you do have a smart speaker okay well that right now is a choice okay no one is like forcing you to it but in the car it's kind of a necessity so we're going to see more and more of these we know that bmw comes with alexa and volkswagen comes with cd uh, otherwise, uh, there is over 400 different car models that can link to Android Auto, so you don't even need a device, you just link it to your phone. Or three weeks ago, Amazon launched Echo Auto, so that is Alexa for your car, and it's just a little device that you can plug on any car, smart car or not. Um, otherwise, there is also a lot of startups starting to create little attachments that you can put on any car, that some of them also have a screen if your car doesn't have a screen. Now, what this means is not only that, um, that voice is going to be available in every single car, it means that it's independent on your disposable income. You can buy a brand new car or you can buy the cheap attachment. You can all now have a personal assistant 24 seven. And when you have it in the car, you're going to miss it when you get home. And what that means is that hopefully, well, I'm, I'm, I am a little bit for a utopian <laughs> futuristic thing, but um, hopefully that means we're going to be more passionate about what we do every day because we will <laughs> give all the things that we don't want to do uh, to, our, to our personal assistant. And okay. if, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> waiting for that day. Uh, and then also we're going to be more passionate about what we do every day. We're going to choose better what we do. I say um, we're finally going to be hired to be humans. <laughs> instead of doing other things that we don't want to do. But, um, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Anyway, yeah, you have to think, oh yeah, also we might have more free time. Right now people say, oh, I don't have free time, I'm super busy, but then you ask them, how, how, how many episodes of Netflix have you watched this week? And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, maybe you do have some free time. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just how we manage it. So we're going to use technologies to rewire our brain on the things that really matter. There's going to be a lot of assistants that actually are going to have the, the granny assistant role. Uh, and brands, maybe your brand is one of those that's going to help people increase their quality of life and rewire their brains to do things that truly matter. So I'll leave that question there <laughs> for you. Um, so we think the car is going to drive voice adoption. And you're going to be able to do uh, fun things like this, like you are on the street, you see an out-of-home ad, that could even be just a print, not even a digital ad, and before you had to like hope the consumer is going to remember that when they get home, or hope that they were going to move away from their, where they were heading to, to pass by the store, now they can just say, oh, at the, the Kellogg's, this is the advent calendar, yeah. right? Pretty yeah, cool. So add the Kellogg's advent calendar to basket. So you don't even have to, um, to wait for, expect the consumer is going to remember that. And these technologies are actually 
uh, gonna increase our cravings for instant rewards because we will be able to instantly take action on things. Um, another advantage might be that soon, if you match the location of the car with the call to add to basket and the location of that out of home ad, you might be able to manage better the, the ROI of this ad, which now currently is very hard to do. So we're gonna see changes there. So we see that as humans, we will still ask for advice, and there is research that shows that we are fine to be advised by an AI uh, when it's things that we don't care so much about, just routinary things. But for, thi for things that you care about, you want the expert advice of another human. So we're gonna see a lot of more partnerships between brands and publishers or influencers or the brands themselves, and we will show you some examples, being the advisors. So how is your brand gonna become one of those advisors AIs uh, that a person will reach when they need it? Otherwise, she reorders what she had already chosen once. All of these technologies are adding friction to consumer choice. And if you were the first brand that they chose one day, that's lucky news for you because that's just gonna be eternally reordered by these technologies. Um, if not, uh, well, we are already looking into systems of how to break those closed cycles and help consumer discover new products. This is called brand bypass and it's quite serious for a lot of FMCG brands. So it's saying that if you are moving into the area of the window, the shop, and you're just adding things by voice into basket, there is a risk that, as Elena said, the decision is going to be done by the retailer or the, the back-end functionality is at Amazon, therefore maybe Whole Foods and whatever's trending there at the top of that category. Um, but the idea of brand bypass isn't actually new. This is an article from 1982 where Sarsons are trying to encourage the audience to think of Sarsons rather than vinegar, so say Sarsons. And it's just, you know, it's never been more important uh, to build up that kind of brand presence and brand love with your audience so that you're brand name almost becomes synonymous with the product that you're delivering. And that's kind of, if we're thinking about something that's been called upon uh, by human being, but if we take it a step further, as we're near of the connected home, we now also are seeing devices that will ask for auto replenishment themselves. So this is a partnership with Siemens uh, dishwasher and finish by Rekit Benkiza. So when you buy this, uh, this dishwasher, what happens is it's already got the packet finished with it. When you're two tabs away from the end of that packet, the dishwasher will just add finish to your shopping basket. So you could be able to swap out finish for a rival <coughs> brand, but the chances are, because it's, you know, it's such a frictionless experience for the consumer, they probably won't bother, because actually the payoff of having the auto replenishment is much greater, that convenience, than having to twiddle about and switch to their previous possible previous brand. So we're calling this now uh, the new B2B, so the new bot to bot. And it doesn't just stop here with dishwashers either, it's going to extend out to other connected devices within the home and the kitchen, like the fridge. Yeah, the fridge is quite an interesting one, you probably never expected this, but your fringe now knows it's totally self-aware, that's what we say, <laughs> all of these technologies are self-aware, and uh, it knows what's in it. Now, the repercussions of knowing what's in it is actually very interesting, and it takes many, many levels that we that are active now. This is happening right now in our fridge, um, but mm -hmm. probably many other levels that we can't even imagine right now. Um, but let's go a little bit in order here. You can see them at the bottom. Something really cool is remote view. So obviously now you can be, we've all been there, right, in the supermarket mm -hmm. wondering what, <laughs> do we have anything left of this or that or that? So now you will be able to check your fridge wherever you are. Okay, awesome, that should be good for the environment as well um, so that you don't, you know, overfill with things that you already have and so on. Um, but what's interesting for brand is food tracking. This camera has image recognition and again, there is something for every pocket. You buy the brand new fridge, the Samsung one, 3,000 pounds. You buy a little camera, the smarter camera that is an attachment, 150 pounds. With 50 pounds Amazon voucher in it. So 100 pounds for the same service, it's quite impressive. Uh, food tracking, if you take the juice out, it has recognized the brand. If you don't put it back, it gets reordered. So you will eternally drink the exact same juice unless someone does something about it. Mm -hmm. um, and what you can do about it? Well, we have the expiry dates. This is done in three ways. If it, if it see a expiry date on a label, it will, it will take it, it will read it. 
If not, it has some averages, like tomatoes has nine day average uh, expiry date. Or you can manually, it points out the fridge once you put things in, it tells you what's in it that is new and you can add the expiry dates. With expiry date and matching it again with your favorite publishers or your favorite brands or your favorite influencers, you get recipes advice. And by getting recipe advice, again, that's good for the environment because you get to use what's about to go bad. But we can say, oh, you should create this tonight, but you're missing so and so. Shall we send you a sample or and so on? And then obviously, if you like the new products that we are sending you, those could get into outdoor replenishment. That's the opportunity. But again, think of who is going to advise those recipes to your consumer. So let's see some examples of how brands are trying to become uh, the trusted voice in this arena. So Stelloder for uh, beauty and skincare uh, has done Ask Leave, and this is in partnership with Google. So this is not an Alexa example, which is important for you to see as well, because most people are focusing a lot in Alexa, but there is much more <laughs> out there. Um, so what's interesting is they're trying to uh, to capture the consumer to trust Stelloder to give them advice on how to do their night routine for their skin. But obviously, once you have developed an AI like that, you want to make sure that people know about it and that people is curious to try and test it out. So they have done really fun videos. We also see a trend that videos tend to have a lot of humor um, to make people curious enough to go and try the skills. <laughs> Okay, so actually the way that works is very simple and a lot of these things that we have seen uh, are similar. It's uh, what we call a decision tree. It has all the products that Stelloder can serve you at the bottom um, and you get there through three questions. It asks you different questions like how much time do you have in the night, what are you trying to achieve and so on, what type of skin you have and with those three questions it gives you a product. So that's kind of as, uh, that's kind of expected that they will give you advice about what cream to use. Now what was not expected but we see also a trend there is they're trying to broaden it how much uh, of an area they mm -hmm. can they can capture. Um, so they're also giving you nutritional advice. You probably never expected that, but obviously knowing the type of skin you have, they could give you uh, advice on what to eat because that links to your skin, uh, to your skin quality. Um, and also, again, they are doing a quite a funny video uh, to show this. Hey Google, can I talk to Liv at Estee Lauder? What foods are good for my skin? A diet of leafy greens promotes healthy skin. Hi, um, can you add spinach to my meatzilla pizza? But, you know, can you make it an extra large though? There you go. The healthiest food out there. <laughs> so, okay, I'm conscious of the time, but I'll show you that not only you can say, okay, let's capture a bigger area than what we're normally known for. We call that, are you the trusted voice? In what area are you the trusted voice? But they're taking advantage, well, this is not still older, sorry, this is now Coty, taking advantage of the fact that the new smart speakers are coming with the screens. And that is both Alexa and Google. The latest Google Home Hub has a massive screen as well. Um, which means that now you can give advice using also imagery and eventually also video. Not video yet, but eventually you will be able to add video to that. Uh, so you probably don't need to see the whole experience here. But um, also they have called it let's get ready instead of cutting. Not everybody needs to know that their favorite brands are part of this big umbrella. So you speak with it and it gives you advice and then eventually you can add the products to basket and so on. So it's advising you, depending on your skin tone, eyes, hair and so on, it gives you different advice. And yeah, at the end you add it to basket. Return to training. What's trending? I 
shop the look is the phrase to add it to basket that's the first time we see the brand so it's totally not pushy you can still use this advice uh, whenever you want it without um, having to have all the branding on your face all the time but obviously the idea is that long term uh, the consumer will start purchasing those products that's kind of what's expected long term what you'll notice from all the experiences that we've, we've shown you there is that you know it kind of reinforces the point that home really is a new stall all of the experiences, as immersive and assistive as they are, they're all fully shoppable. So for us as a business delivering video, what we realised we needed to have an answer to was that particular trend. So we've now launched Shoppable, we work with a number of different partners. This is Ted Baker and Wirewax as an example. So you go through the video experience, you can drop things into basket. You can check out whenever you want to, whereas in the past with videos like this you had to wait to the end and the retailers saw a lot of drop off actually through that. So we just leave it in the hands of the consumer now uh, to make that decision. And then for a company like Ted Baker, where their audience are kind of used to the idea that they're going to bring them instant gratification, you know, instant shoppable experiences, it's not too much of a leap for them to then think about how they extend that trend out in a way that we've seen with Tommy Hilfiger. So you can make all of your kind of experiential stuff completely shoppable. So we'll play the video to show you. We have a shower at the top, but, uh, but the billboards are shoppable within this experience. There are clothes that you can snap and you can shop. And obviously they've hired a whole cast of models to wander around within this experience wearing all of their new range. Um, you can shop that. Not, not the models. Not the models. Not um, the models. clothes that the models are wearing, <laughs> you can shop those. Um, but it, yeah. you know, again, it's just back to that whole fact that you're never going to lose a sale because as soon as that inspiration strikes, people are able to act on it. And I think the more of these kind of emerging things that we see, the more that educational piece and the realisation will come about that that's possible. Yeah, and actually a lot of brands are jumping into into the whole image recognition shopping. Um, so we talked about voice and this is a little bit about what's happening with uh, with lenses, image recognition. And for example, uh, a lot of platforms are moving very fast into this actually. And we know that Snapchat now lets you snap pictures of what your friends are wearing. And if it detects a product that it's in Amazon, you can add it to your basket in Amazon, which is quite impressive. Uh, now on that case is detecting the actual exact product, but Asus, what's doing very cleverly is that they are finding um, similar products. So it's not the exact same one, but it's similar enough. Um, so what that means, it's also a kind of brand bypass. So what that means, if uh, more, more for fashion brands or designer brands, uh, if you have invested a lot in an influencer wearing your clothes or an out of home ad with a celebrity, a magazine spread, anything like that, um, people's behavior right now is to snap pictures of that or take a scre screen grabs of that and buy the copy. So for ASOS, that's great because the platform gets to keep the purchase on one hand. On the other hand, they know exactly what people want. They have pictures of it. So they can even make a call to the manufacturer to ask to change color last minute because they can predict what's coming next or even narrow down uh, to a specific location. Like in London, this is trending because people are searching it. In Scotland, it's different. Managers talk better and so on. It's The impact is pretty, pretty big. Um, especially for the data that they are gathering. IKEA is doing this as well. So now in, a, in the new IKEA app, you can snap picture of products and find similar products in IKEA and the same. If they find that they have something similar but people are not adding it to the basket, they will analyze what detail like, for example, now golden trimming or rose gold trimming is very trendy. So if they're missing that, they just add it to the product and they start selling that. But the reason we mention IKEA quickly is to explain the last trend, which is augmented reality. And it's because you can see things uh, at perfect scale that IKEA has also jumped into this. And now the biggest challenge for IKEA, you go all the way there and you live without the purchase because you forgot to take the measurements and you're not sure if something is going to fit or when you shop online as well, the exact same problem. Well, now you can try things at home before you make your purchase or purchase directly. Yeah. You get an idea. Um, and we know it's not a fad 
because we have proved now that this is moving into mirrors, so augmented reality and all the filters that you use in Snapchat and Facebook and so on, all of that is coming um, to uh, interactive mirrors. Mm -hmm. This one is 250 pounds, so I don't mm -hmm. see a problem of people starting to get this in their homes. It's basically like an iPad with a mirror, but an, a special camera that can see deeper into your skin quality and obviously very good lighting as well. And brands <laughs> can develop apps that people can download in these kind of mirrors so that they get advice for brands or uh, tutorials and so on. So that's definitely growing. Also in retail, you can see it in many retail. In Covent Garden in London, you have Tom Ford now that you can try the makeup on in the mirrors of Tom Ford without having to. Uh, it's also more hygienic, no, in a way. Like yeah, it, definitely. Yeah. Do it uh, so now as well for that reason. Yeah. So augmented reality, it's, it is actually growing. And it's important to start thinking to what extent your brand uh, should start a strategy because it is eventually, finally, coming into the glasses. Mm -hmm. So we obviously know that Google <laughs> tried this a long time ago. But uh, yeah, now it is happening. Less uh, initially this year, we're starting to see some glasses that can show you notifications, like the Google Glass was trying to do long ago. Um, and the reason of the success now, hopefully, is that we are actually more ready socially. Uh, but also the technologies. They can be thinner, lighter way, longer batteries, and we have 5G in major cities coming next year. So when you link all of those together, this is eventually going to make the phone obsolete, or the phone is going to have a different purpose. For the main, for main interactions, we're going to use the glasses, and you also have to think how your brand is going to use that in the future. Because this is what it could look like. This is uh, an image of hyper reality, or as I like to refer to it, hyper hell. It's just a lot going on here, and a lot of brands and experiences fighting for attention. And if uh, the era of ad blocking has taught us nothing, it is that we need to be really mindful of that. Um, this new arena is no different, and I guess that's why. Uh, for us as a company, what we're really thinking about is what's the emotional intelligence that's needed around all of these different things, these new touch points. So. Again, for us as a business, the idea of exploring, exploring the connected home is great in terms of some of the product innovations we've talked about, but also thinking about how we connect the dots in a really sympathetic way that's still going to deliver the campaign impact that we need, but is going to be polite and complementary to people's lifestyles, essentially. So we're going to leave you with that thought, but um, should you ever be in London, we would absolutely mm -hmm. love to have you guys come down. I don't know if Jane and the team might want to organise something separately, potentially, yeah, but... Yeah, um, email out to everybody and introduce anyone they can liaise directly with you. That'd be great. Um, mm -hmm. All of the stuff that you've seen today and much, much more we have within the home. We've got Elena and her team that are on hand to answer any questions that you might have as well. So um, yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks very much.